And then our last talk of the day is going to be about um, using Triton to do some inference um, from one of our postdocs, Andrew. Thank you, Nick. Oh, I think we missed a question online. Sorry if we missed a question online. Um, would you mind just putting it in the doc and we'll, we'll be able to answer it? Okay, great. You can see the slide. So I, I'm Andrew Naylor. I'm a, a NISAP poster also with the uh, Data and AI uh, Services Group. I'm going to be talking about uh, NVIDIA Triton, um, talking about, I guess, AI inference. So oh, there we go. So I just want to talk about inference and a bit about tri Triton as a, as a tool and then some science use cases and give a demonstration. So um, Peter was talking a lot about deep learning and we're talking a lot about training, but actually inference is a really, really important part of the kind of ML AI uh, workflow. So, uh, you know, inference is, is that the, they have the training part where you take your, your data and you're trying to predict something or solve something, but actually doing that, the inference is, um, you know, is a really big step and it's actually the efficiency is really important. So uh, IBM actually say, I don't know if this is true, but IBM claim that, um, oh, <laughs> IBM claim that, um, basically an AI that, you know, 90% of the, the, an AI's life is spent in an inference mode. So, you know, it takes takes years to train, but maybe it goes for decades. Well, maybe not now, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, maybe it takes, you know, hours to train, but it, you're running a model for years. So it's really important that that's running efficiently uh, and well. So this this little demo is just a, you know, a dog, an image of a dog put into a neural network and out comes a, ca a classification of a dog. So this is just the inference part. So, um, there are kind of two ways to kind of serve this. Um, so you can do your inference directly. So let's say you, you're on a Perlmutter GPU node and you have your PyTorch model. You can run that directly on the GPU, you know, through PyTorch. There's lots of ways to do that. But actually you might want to do it, what's called as a service. So having your, um, maybe your outside nurse, maybe you're using a, a, a CPU node and you're actually talking to a, a GPU server to do that request. So it's actually separated. So um, there are some really good reasons why you might want to do that. You might want to factorize out uh, a machine learning framework. Uh, so maybe your code is um, not very compatible. It's not very Pythonic. Maybe it's C++, maybe it's another thing, maybe it's Java. It's not very Pythonic and it doesn't play well with a lot of these Python uh, machine learning frameworks. Um, also, maybe you have a very traditional workflow setup and you know you, you, there's a machine learning step and actually you just kind of want to factorize that out. Um, you can actually get, uh, in some cases, you can get a better resource utilization and scalability. So um, uh, it can actually be more efficient than running it just directly. Uh, and just put a little side note here. If you kind of need a single node for your application, if you just wanted to run inference, you just want to run a single node. Uh, NVIDIA has a really cool called uh, TensorRT. That might be better for you than this, this demo. Um, it, it is really quite good uh, i can take questions later if people are interested um it also is a is a it works in this other tool but like if you just want to do single this so that's like a very good um kind of tool nvidia has for that so um the the tool i'm going to talk about is this nvidia try inference service so it's a, it's kind of an open source a software platform developed by nvidia for kind of deploying these ai models for inference so uh, you have obviously a lot of the training but obviously serving is a really key part on machine learning and um, it's quite popular. So it's got a lot of support and it actually has lots of different supports, many different uh, deep learning frameworks, your, you know, PyTor, your TensorFlow, other things. Uh, and it also supports that, that TensorRT. So how does it work? Um, so you start, it's, it's quite simple. You start off basically by creating a model repository. Now this basically is just a folder that includes your AI model. So maybe this is a, a, you have a PyTorch model, maybe you have a TensorFlow model, maybe it's an Onyx, it's in something that, that is, is supported by Triton. So you have your model and then you give, you give along with that model, a configuration file. So in your configuration file, you maybe tell it, okay, what's, you know, what's the dimensions of your input? What's the dimensions of your output? What other things are needed? So maybe you tell it, I only want to run a CPU or I only want to run a GPU. Maybe you tell it other things like there's other features you can tell it. Uh, you then, the next step is just to uh, launch right. And so I, I here I'm using Shifter. You can use Podman. Uh, you can actually, because um, uh, it's open source, you can make your own binary. I like to use containers because it's just, I think, a very simple uh, thing to do. And NVIDIA provides lots of containers. Um, and you just run your 
uh, Triton server. So it's as simple as just running a, picking a version, running that server, uh, and then giving it, um, so here I'm just giving it the folder that I created earlier, and then it starts the server running. And then once the server's set up, I can then send a request through uh, kind of HTTP or gRPC. So I can send a request. Now, um, you can send it locally. So let's say you had it running on Perlmutter on a, on a compute node. You could send it from a login node, a compute node, anywhere within the nurse network that can access it. But you could also, if you're using Spin, you could send it from outside nurse. So you could be on your laptop at home and you could send uh, an image or, or an array or, or some kind of JSON data to spin and then to that it would it would uh, be able to be accessed and do that request. So here it's just a little demo of a it's just using this dense net uh, model. So this is a, a, a kind of a demo that Nvidia has where you just have a, a client which just uh, has this model and you pass it basically an image of a model. It's using this dense net to basically classify, basically say, hey, what's the top two things it's likely to be? And it says, uh, it says, oh, I think it's a coffee mug uh, or a cup. So it's kind of confident. So it's kind of a simple thing to do. Um, so it has many, many features. I'm, I might not go through all of them. There's a ton of clients. And also, because it's gRPC, you can generate that um, client. So the cool thing is I was looking online and you could, there's a Rust client that somebody made. So like if your language can, you know, basically uh, do this, it's like a gRPC proto compiler, which most languages can, then you can just generate the client yourself. Um, there's a, a C API. So if you want like crazy good speed or you want to manage the Triton server, there's a C API, which also has a C++ wrapper if you need to interact with that. Um, it has a, it's good. It's kind of an enterprise grade software. So it has lots of things like it can handle multiple models and, and, and uh, different versions. So you could have several models um, that are either together or separate and multiple versions that be able to handle and serve at the same time. Um, one of the really nice features is that um, there are lots of backends that are out there already. So things like PyTorch and TensorFlow. But if you have a custom one you want to write, uh, it's very easy to just go ahead and write that and then deploy that. So that's that's what I'll be showing later. Um, there's also pre and post operations. If, if you need to like you know, modify the data somehow, it, it works both on CPUs and GPUs. It has a, a cool dynamic batching system. So if you're sending multiple requests, it can then uh, execute them uh, at the same time. Uh, so it's quite efficient in that. And it can like um, monitor, um, uh, I guess, you know, it has metrics inbuilt. So you can monitor like GPU, CPU usage, uh, inference requests, uh, latency, other things like that. And it's really cool. It's got things like a, an analog to, to kind of optimize um, kind of model performance. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, this science use case for the Exatrax uh, research group here at LB. Uh, well, it's a, it's a, uh, several researchers uh, across the states, but um, they were taking um, a, a kind of traditional uh, HEP application, so doing pattern recognition, so taking these kind of red red dots on a, in, a, in a particle detector and then reconstructing these gray lines, so reconstructing these particle tracks and they, they were taking a traditional algorithm and they were turning it um, into using a GNN, basically machine learning uh, kind of tracking. Uh, so they're taking a G, this GNN, this kind of pipeline uh, to be able to um, find these tracks. Uh, now, uh, what they wanted to do was um, they wanted to explore the possibility to use NERSC as a kind of a GPU server. So to basically, uh, they'd already had this GNN pipeline and they were like, oh, what, what if we can now have that as a, a kind of a service so that people running uh, analysis um, can just then send their uh, hits to a service run at NERSC. It would then give them back the tracks. So basically going through this entire pipeline. Um, and so they were really interested in exploring that. Um, so this was their, what's called an ensemble model, which is basically a series of models. So the, the Trident has these multiple backends so you can chain them. Um, so it, it, there was a, a combination of traditional kind of PyTorch models that they developed, uh, which is a standard PyTorch, and then uh, using some Python code, and they were kind of chained together, so sending kind of a data file through several different iterations to get the tracks at the end. Uh, but unfortunately, it had quite bad performance, uh, and so the discussion with uh, with others was to decide to uh, move towards a kind of a custom backend, which, which basically executes C++ code instead. So to basically, instead of having 
uh, several backends just have a single backend that will basically do this entire pipeline and said that it was, was kind of customized. Um, the performance was very, very good. So the performance ended up being a, a very good, ended up being um, much, much better than I think was originally uh, thought. So he, here's kind of just a graph of um, basically running through a, a, a kind of a sample data set of inf average inference time per event. Um, and so uh, there was kind of here on the right is the kind of traditional non-machine learning algorithm. Uh, here, here on the left is is this GNN algorithm, firstly kind of done uh, in on a CPU and then moved to a GPU. And then this kind of final one here is when they're using Triton as a service. And you can see it gets very good performance. Um, so this was tested on Perlmutter on, on a GPU node using uh, 1A100. Um, Another experiment that has used um, this kind of quite successfully is uh, the CMS project. So they have been testing kind of the, this Triton uh, at scale on uh, Google Cloud, on uh, at Fermilab and at Purdue. So they've been doing a lot of uh, investigation into kind of large scale testing with asynchronous requests. So being able to, so they have, um, they're looking at their data uh, processing pipeline and they're looking at, uh, can they kind of, there's, there's a bit of latency involved when you send this, especially if they're sending it to the cloud. Um, they're looking at, can you kind of, can it be obfuscated by basically doing these things asynchronously? And they've been able to see quite a good um, uh, increased output through using this. And one of the things that they were saying is that uh, the, the kind of real pro is that they can optimize the CPU GPU ratio. And so it ends up being kind of more efficient. So maybe your code is very CPU heavy, but you can get GPU acceleration, but um, maybe the centers where you run your uh, GPU code, there's many more GPUs and CPUs, and, and you kind of really only want one GPU for, for you know, a 10 CPU nodes or whatever. So they were able to find that. And one of the things that they, they also said is that their uh, algorithm design was quite nice because they could drop in any model in any framework, and then it, it just connected up to their pre-existing uh, workflow quite easily uh, and there's there's here is there is kind of a paper that they've written about it so if you want to read more um i'm just going to really talk quickly about uh performance um so i ran a um nvidia have a um, kind of a get, getting started uh, resnet uh, pytorch uh, example and i was running this on Perlmutter to get a few numbers uh so resnet is a, a an image classification a neural network um and um uh, I was running it on a, a on a GPU node on a Perlmutter GPU node, uh, kind of uh, uh, doing a, a gRPC test, and I was able to get kind of in a very simple manner, just without you know tweaking it, just running it as is, uh, basically six hundred fifty uh, its images a second uh, with relatively good latency. Uh, I then uh, tried running connecting it to Spin, so actually from offsite I could then do the same request um, from offsite, and actually. I actually had several challenges and the, the performance is much worse and it's something that I'm definitely willing to explore. But it's interesting because if you look at NVIDIA have their um, ML perf results, so basically there, it's a, a body that uh, is interested in benchmarking kind of AI machine learning tools. Um, you can see that when they use an A100 now, granted it's the 80 gigabyte version, they can achieve significantly more. So like 39,000 images a second, um, which is quite quite substantial compared to 650. And that was that was me using four A100s and they're just using one. Now with that, you, there's a caveat of obviously, they're the people who make the graphics cards and the software. So they have a very good understanding of how to optimize it. And also um, there is, you know, in that, in that use case, I think they're doing lots of tricks and things to be able to optimize that, that I was not doing. So things like TensorRT and a few other things like the, the way that they're using the protocols and the networking that I think you can. But this is basically just to say that, like, we are in the early days of kind of exploring Triton, that these kind of issues and, and performance things we're seeing, you know, can get worked out. You know, NVIDIA clearly has been able to work them out and get kind of quite insane performance. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show that. And then I'm going to show in the last 10 minutes here, I'm going to show a demonstration. Uh, so unfortunately, because Perlmutter is down, it's a video, but um, I'm just going to kind of walk through this video. So um, this is of the uh, a, a kind of a Triton demo of the X-Trax code. So this is what I was showing earlier. So this is in the, in a, in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, you can connect to it. Uh, you could connect the server by C++, but I just thought it'd be simpler just for a demo to show it in uh, Python. 
So um, I've kind of gone into a compute job and start, I'll show you in a second, started up um, the, the Triton server in Shifter. Um, I just use make because it's just easier because I'm also like, I save the IP address of the uh, compute node in the file just to so it's easy. Um, but here it's basically just starting, which just using Shifter, you could use Podman just to start kind of a simple um, a container that I've got from NVIDIA. And it's just here, I'm just, it's in a very verbose mode. So it's just telling you like, it's loading up those two configuration files and two models. And now I'm basically just checking is the, that was just a curl to check is the server ready because it's um, obviously it's a, a kind of enterprise software. So you can check things like that. You can do curl requests to check, hey, is the model ready? Is, is something working? Is it not? So now it's started up now, you can see that it's it's detected, um, it, well, you could see it detected for GPUs. It, it's telling you that um, the interface uh, interfaces for GRPC and HPC, are, uh, sorry, HTTP is working. Uh, now I can connect to it through the Python client. So I just give it the URL. And then here, I'm, I'm just showing that there's the, here were the two, this is what I was talking about, the, the folder. This is all you need to bring is the, here was the folder with the, the configuration. Now for this particular example, because we're using a custom backend, um, the models are, are kind of baked into the back end. You don't have to do that, but that was the choice of this experiment. So that, that that's just baked into their back end that they've written. So all the user needs to do is, is specify the configuration file. Um, and so now we can also uh, check is the model, is it loaded? Because you can also, there's some very clever features about loading and unloading mod models dynamically. Um, it's then also we're checking the configuration so we can, this is basically what that configuration.txt file was, is, is just a file that basically says, what's your inputs? What, what's your outputs? What version are you using? Um, is it, you know, are you using CPU, GPU, or are you just using CPU or just using GPU? And then here we just tell it um, for the custom backend, it's just a variable that we're telling like, hey, you should pull some extra files from here when you run. Um, and, so here I'm just loading the text files in. So it's a CSV file. So it's just some space points. So uh, in, in R, Phi, and uh, Z. So this is just some space points that's needed for the, um, uh, basically needed for the model. So this is your input. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to, I'm going to write a bit of uh, gRPC, Triton code, which basically tells it, okay, here's my NumPy array. Here's, you know, what the input's called, because I could have, you know, multiple inputs, I'm saying this array is this input and it's this data type and telling it, okay, and my output needs to be this data type and it's called this. And then I run the request now. Every The first time you run a request when the model's like starting, it's slow. That's just, it's just a feature of Triton because it's doing those things in the back end. When you run it again and it be, it's very quick. So it's just a, every first time you run it, it the first time you run it, it's slow. Um, and then here, so I'm running it again just to show that it's much quicker the second time. Um, and then here, I'm just showing that uh, we've taken the results here. So the um, so the blue dots were the, um, here the blue dots were the, that, that was the space points. So the blue dots were the input and the red uh, are, are the, um, the particle jets. So basically it's tracking the lines. Now it should go all the way up to one. There's a problem with the model, but um, this kind of just shows you what you can do is like, oh, it's able to basically, you, it, it, it had already been trained. And this was an inference and I could do this like, you know, maybe on a thousand images. Um, and so this is the kind of thing you can do, um, which I think is quite clever and powerful is that you can do this from a notebook or let's say they, they have a C++ application that they can just do this in is give it the uh, kind of the, the data CSV data and then uh, give it to Triton in a, in a C++ client and then get that back and, and do, you know, save it to file if they need to. Um, Next slide. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that we really want to do is if anybody has a kind of a compelling use case, uh, we'd really love to know because uh, we're interested in exploring about uh, how to use this and use this more efficiently and, and getting more um, use cases. Um, thank you for listening. Um, yeah, any questions? Are there any questions uh, online or in the room? So yeah, your your uh, part 
backpacks. They didn't go to, they all look like they just went off to the side. Is that just part of the, the training of the... I, I think it's the model that's been used. I okay. think there's a there's some problem. I wonder if there's some problem with maybe the model that's been used. Um, but it wasn't, it was nothing to throw. I, when <laughs> okay. I showed it to the researchers, they were like, hang on a minute. Why is the model like this? So. <laughs> Great. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming in person. This is the uh, the last talk of today. Um, please come back tomorrow. We will be having some more exciting science talks tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, we'll be seeing a lot on science talks, uh, as well as um, nurse efforts into super facility, as well as the new IRI, the Integrated Research Initiative. Um, anything else? Anyone else to say? There will not be food tomorrow. <laughs> Eat up of all the food today. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, everyone online.